All right, let's go get some coffee and check out the garden. Here on the arch, I have Chinese red noodle beans on both sides. And this little pot here is some mint and blue, tall blue cornflowers. Flowers it might be looking a little rough today from all the rain we've had, and this is my new chocolate mint. It smells so good. Over here I sewed some amaranth that's coming up. This is my herb bed. I've got parsley, chives, beautiful strawberry blonde calendula, some sweet Thai basil, but look what's happening here. I'm not sure what is eating them but it's strange i've got a couple of plants and i just noticed this coleus this morning when i just stepped out here what is going on with that i'm noticing that in a couple of my plants i don't know if it's possibly slugs i do have slugs in here chamomile is looking lovely My son patient, basil, some snapdragons, here's my amethyst basil that I just got, looks nice. My little carpet of oregano, more basil, Let's see something's really munching on those. Some more parsley. I've got a purple pepper back there, some okra, and look, see the okra's getting some brown browning on its leaves. And then this stunning borage, it is really showing. Here are two of my potato rows. I've got blue potatoes in here. Down at the end are some um, Yukon Gold variety. And then this one, I believe, is one from our harvest last year. I noticed that. I thought these were all blue, but if you look at the stems compared to the blue ones, this is something else. And it looks like the Yukon Golds I grew last year. This is, what is this? This is a winter squash, honey nut squash. And the nasturtiums I planted under they're popping up and this is a seminal pumpkin not sure how well it's going to do in our zone but we're going to give it a try and those leaves are stunning these are homestead beans climbing up this trellis they were one of my favorites last year delicious let's talk tomatoes this is a black brandy wine I've got some blossoms coming, but they are looking really nice. Here's a Paul Robeson, and look, I've got my first slicer. You see? That was my first slicer tomato this year. This is a Tomasol. It was a free seed packet that I got from Baker Creek with one of my orders, and I'm excited about it. It's a white tomato slicer, and it sounds delicious. This is a Berry's Crazy Cherry, and I thought I lost all of my seedlings of this variety, and I had a tray set aside to give my mom and noticed that one of the tomatoes I set aside for her was a Berry's Crazy Cherry, so I kept it. Um, but I'll give her some tomatoes. And since then, since I discovered that healthy-looking seedling, I found a couple more, but the other two are not as robust as that one. This is a Kellogg's breakfast, another large orangey yellow slicing tomato. And here's another Dr. White's, some little marigolds. Here is a brandy wine. 
the Sun Golds were the first, here's another one, to fruit in the garden this year. And they are just jamming. Here I have two white currant tomatoes. They're just little tiny. I don't think they get much bigger than that, what they are right now. Here's a Napa Chardonnay, also a yellow variety of cherry tomato. Really great flavor, I've heard. Here's a blueberries cherry tomato. Back here behind this row of tomatoes, I interplanted some beans, and wow, they really shot up with all this rain. This is an Amish paste. Another Amish paste. This is a mortgage lifter. Big red slicer. Here's another blue cream. And another Kellogg's breakfast. A couple of eggplants that are eh, struggling a little bit. Look at that yellowing. I'm going to work on that this week. I'm sure the rain that we're getting is not helping that situation. Some sprawling oregano, thyme, which is my favorite herb, some parsley and chives in a pot. Wow, these nasturtiums popped up and are doing really great. Little basket of strawberries and its cute little runner coming out. Back here is some mint. Here is some sugar baby watermelon. And I have a Berry's Crazy Cherry, as I had said earlier, that's another one of the small seedlings that I found in a tray. The fabric pots I had written down what I planted, uh, the plastic pots I have little tags in, so I know that this one is a Berry's Crazy Cherry. Not sure about the other four fabric pots I have over here, but they're doing good. I've got a little pot of thyme there. This bed behind I'm anticipating not being able to really get to and access this area once these tomatoes fill in and then these melons are creeping along the ground. So I planted a lot of flowers and they're starting to come up, a bunch of zinnias and some nasturtiums, I believe. That's gonna be really pretty when that fills out. This, I don't remember what this melon is, but I've got one two, three melons planted here, and they are small, personal-sized melons. Here's another Sun Gold, and another Thornburg's Terracotta, Buttercup squash, another Granny tomato, that fluted red slicer, a Blueberries cherry, and a variety of Delicata squash. And then another Napa Chardonnay cherry tomato. My milkweed is doing lovely this year. It didn't bloom last year, but it's blooming now. So pretty. So in this bed back here, we have leftover spring crops that I'm probably going to pull soon. And my garlic is getting close to harvest. I popped some eggplants in there and those are doing a lot better up here in this bed than the ones that are in the ground. This is the bed that I had potatoes in, Yukon Gold potatoes in last year and I had three volunteers come up this year and we just left them. Some leftover chard from our spring and then one more little bush of lettuce over there hanging on. This is my hot pepper bed. I've got a fish pepper here that is really an interesting plant and pepper. It's variegated, but the peppers are also variegated. Orange jalapeno, cayenne, and a couple of sugar rush peach plants. And there's another orange jalapeno. And then I've got another fish over here. And the variegation's a little bit more intense on this one. So pretty. 
I've got two mounds of Armenian long cucumbers. These did fantastic in my garden last year. Um, it was the only cucumber plant that survived. Amazing flavor, it's my favorite cucumber. I'm gonna grow it every year. I almost only grew this variety this year, but I did add two mounds of Parisian pickling cucumbers to give those a try. And I've got some nasturtiums popping up all around. There's a rogue calendula back there that I just let go. I planted that very, very early spring and it died back almost completely. Thought it was gone. Didn't pull it up and now look at it's coming back. Back here along the fence, I have a little herd of silverleaf sunflowers and some zinnias poking up around it that I'm going to pluck out and transplant to somewhere else in the garden because they'll never survive in all of that crowded shade. Peas are still putting on. These are a mix of the purple tendril peas and the sugar magnolia tendril peas. And underneath are cucamelons finally poking through to see the world. And by the time they're ready to climb these trellises, these peas are going to be long gone. Wow, look at this lemon basil starting to flower. That's not great, but looking wonderful. This really bushed out. This is my sweet pepper bed here. And I've actually started with sweet peppers here in, in this end. And then there's a couple of eggplants in the middle. And then I have some medium, medium heat peppers towards the end there. Here I've got a little dahlia coming on. These are some El Dorado zinnias, which is a really pretty salmon color. I'm looking forward to those. This is a Rondonese squash. These are some zinnias back here with a mammoth sunflower. Also getting a little bit munched. I do have Japanese beetles that eat my sunflowers. Uh, and I have seen a couple of those, cause, so that could be what's happening there. Uh, this is my bean wall. These are all purple potted pole beans. Looking really great. I mean, some of them are reaching for more trellis and there's no more trellis. Here are three rows of Kennebec potatoes. And I have got this rogue bean plant that I did just didn't have the heart to pull out. I'm just gonna let him go. We'll see what happens.